So my tech talk is about Apple CarPlay, and I have three goals today. I want to first tell you roughly what Apple CarPlay is, for those of you who don't know, and show you how Apple CarPlay might manage one small piece of state and to bring it home, how we might use React for such state management. So what is Apple CarPlay? Apple CarPlay lets you use your iPhone in your car. So that's Apple CarPlay, like a big iPhone on your car's head unit. So before we go any further, to give you a better context, we need to talk about limited resources because as in life, in programming, there are limited resources. So if you think about your laptop, you only have one screen. And while you can view a lot of different web pages at the same time, I'm sorry, while you can have a lot of different web pages open at the same time, you can typically only view one page at a time. Let's ignore for the fact that you can split the screen because you can't do that in Apple CarPlay, and quite frankly, you probably don't want to have so many windows open while you're driving anyway. So in the context of Apple CarPlay, as I was saying, in your car, you're also limited to one screen, which is your car's head unit, but you have various interfaces that want to dominate that head unit. You have Apple CarPlay interface, and you also have your car's own native car, uh, your car's own native interface. So, here is your car's native interface. This is Apple CarPlay's interface. Back to your car's native interface. Do you notice you can only see one at a time? And limited resources in and of themselves aren't necessarily problematic. I've been using laptop all my life and I don't find it a problem that I only have one screen because websites are typically polite. They're gonna wait their turn. So if I am, reading the New York Times and I decide that I no longer want to learn how to make a delicious beat in math, I'll start looking at other websites, but the New York Times is not gonna magically jump out of nowhere and demand to take control of my screen. So when you're using your laptop, you typically have a lot of control, but this isn't the case in Apple CarPlay. So let's say I am, on my car's native interface right now, which is FM radio, and I think that's a good example because you typically will listen to FM radio using your car, but very few people will use their iPhone to listen to FM radio. So here, let's say I'm driving, I have both hands on the wheel and listening to FM radio, and I get a phone call. See how that screen has changed and I hear ringing from my car's speakers? In this scenario, I have both my hands on the wheel I didn't press any phone icon, and I also don't control when someone's gonna call me. So unlike a laptop user, a user of Apple CarPlay has a lot less control. So this can be extremely problematic. So in the previous example, I was listening to FM radio, not a big deal. Here, I'm backing up. I would really like to keep my eyes on the view of my backup camera, but here we see that a phone call is coming in. So what does Apple do to solve this problem? Apple CarPlay comes with a resource manager, which is kind of like a reducer. It handles state changes. The resource manager in the context of Apple CarPlay is gonna be the one who decides who's gonna be the owner of the main screen, right? When I'm backing up, who gets to have access to that screen? Is it Apple CarPlay? In which case I would see the phone screen or phone call on my, car's head unit, or does it stay with the car, in which case I would continue to see my backup camera. And another resource that we haven't discussed that has, is similar is the car's main audio. The car has one speaker system, but you're either listening to maybe Pandora using your iPhone, or as in our example, FM radio by your car's interface. So you wanna think of Apple, CarPlay's resource manager as a sort of a gatekeeper, like a bouncer, and state is like a club. So everybody wants to get into this very popular club, but a bouncer's job is to stop everyone at the door and first ask questions before letting them in. Does this person have legal aid? Does this person have the right image? Does this person even on the like guest list? So this is what Apple Resource Manager does. So Apple CarPlay 
and your car's native interface both want to get to state, but resource manager is going to stand at the door and ask questions. Well, who has priority here? Is the backup camera more important or is the phone call more important? So the reason I mentioned reducer previously is that for me, naturally, that was where Apple Resource Manager fell in line. Because if you, you think about, uh, well, so the difference with Apple CarPlay's Resource Manager, though, is that it's, it's a much more aggressive reducer. So if you think about the reducers that we worked on in our workshop, they were kind of passive. Like we would just, you know, actions would occur, and so long as, you know, something existed in the database and the action type was legitimate, the new state would be set. So on the left, I've got um, the album reducer from Juke. And so long as the action type was legitimate and so long as we had albums in our database, our reducer would say, okay, sure, I'm going to set the new state. But that's not the case with Apple CarPlay's resource manager. So in our example, a phone call comes in. So the, the Apple CarPlay is requesting ownership of the main screen, but Apple CarPlay is not just going to bend over backwards and be like, okay, Apple CarPlay, or I mean, the resource manager is not just going to bend over backwards and think, okay, Apple CarPlay now wants to be set as the owner of the main screen. I, I have the resources to do that. That's a legitimate request. I'll just go ahead and set a new space. Apple CarPlay's resource manager is going to take a step back and sort of determine whether conditions are met before going ahead and setting a new state. In our case, is the current owner of the car's main screen, the native, the, of the, of the um, head unit's main screen, the, na the car's native interface? And is the purpose of that ownership a backup camera? If that's the case, then I'm just going to return the current state because I don't want that to change. I want to keep looking at my backup camera. But in our first example with FM radio, those conditions are not met. Okay, yes, the owner of the interface is the car, but the purpose is not backup camera. So it does not have priority over a phone call. If we can see this in action. So here, I'm looking at my backup camera and a phone call comes in. And notice, no, there's two sets of rings. There's one on my iPhone. Notice there's no phone screen appearing on the call. Like the phone doesn't come up. I don't see no caller ID. In fact, I actually see a car coming in behind me. And imagine without resource manager, if at that very moment, uh, the phone call had appeared on my head unit, no caller ID, a red button and a green button, I think that would have been extremely dangerous. So that's why, um, that's why resource manager is so incredibly important in the context of Apple CarPlay. So I'm going to make a full disclaimer. This is not exactly how Apple CarPlay's resource manager would work. I tried looking for the source code, but failed miserably because, as you all know, Apple is notoriously secretive. And I'm sure that there are people who even work at Apple who don't understand entirely how resource manager works. But it was just a way for me to view a problem that Apple's engineers came across using the tools that we learned in class. If you want more detailed information on Apple CarPlay, this is a link to um, the introduction of Apple CarPlay at last year's Worldwide Developer Conference. So that's it for my talk. And